And he's very much a guard dog, so he's halal. We're keeping halal in this household. Beautiful, man. I'm happy to hear that. Welcome, brother. Welcome. I appreciate you um, allowing us into your home. Of course, thanks for being here, man. We, we needed to talk more after last time anyway, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Right. And I see your outfit is matching with the house as well, you know, all white. Man, I, it's, I had these tailor-made just the other day. I'm going to make the switch soon. I've been dressing like this for a long really? time, so yeah, it's, it's, it's all organic. It's happening naturally. Beautiful, my brother. Please, brother. Welcome, mate. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank brother. So, I have a little surprise for you. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I, have, I have some gifts for you. When someone as massive as you says I have a little surprise, for you. <laughs> Get a bit <laughs> I don't think people realize how, how big you are, mate. Like, are you, I, sometimes I'm, I forget. I feel like. I'm six foot five uh -huh. and two hundred and thirty pounds. What, what is this? I'm like six, <laughs> seven, three hundred. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love hey, my You know what I'm saying? I love my brother. I love you. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Yeah, head in here, brother. Please. Set up in here. Oh, the shoes. Let me take off. Welcome, welcome, man. So this is the study. Okay. Slash office-ish. Okay. You want to call it that? Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. So I, I noticed that your favorite color is green. It is. So I ended up giving you a prayer mat from the holy city of Mecca. Amazing. Along, straight, straight from along, the source. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Along with some other gifts as well. So this one is like a travel block, right? Okay. Along with it is a prayer mat inside as well, Amazing. right? It's all from the holy city of Mecca. So inshallah, whenever you get an opportunity, you can go ahead and... Uh, open up, have a look, yes, man. Yes, That's yes, incredible. Absolutely. Thank you, bro. Absolutely, absolutely. Straight from the source, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I have another one for you as well that I think uh, you would appreciate. This one is for the house. Okay. You know? Oh, so this, is a, this is a traveling prayer mat. Traveling prayer mat. That's yes. awesome. Yes. I didn't Please. know that was a thing. Oh, look at that, man. Yes. Wow. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, that's stunning. Thank you so much. Absolutely. absolutely. That's absolutely. beautiful. And I have another one for you as well. Woo! Yes. This one is for home. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother, thank you so much. Absolutely, my brother. Absolutely. This is gorgeous. Absolutely, my brother. It's like a fancy prayer, man. <laughs> hey, I, I want to make sure. I want to make sure you enjoy it. I want to make sure you enjoy it. Thank you very much, brother. Only the best for you, my brother. I'll put it in the video. Thank you. I appreciate you, my brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you. What can we get you? Food, drinks, um, some protein bars over there. You know what? I'll take a sparkling water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the man's done his research. I like it. <laughs> There's no still water in this house, so out, out of respect for the, yeah, the top Absolutely, team. absolutely. It's That's only amazing. befitting, it's only befitting. That's amazing, thank you, bro. Yes, I really like it. What can I offer you, man? Uh, I'll take some sparkling water, too. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there you go. We're all on the level here, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> fantastic, man. Well, yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's a lot of fun today. We've got a photo shoot organized from the beach. Uh, we've got a car rocking up, which will be fun. Okay. Uh, wonderful. Uh, my, my watch guy is a, a watch to deliver as well, so a lot, a lot of fun stuff's happening, which let's, okay. let's capture it. Let's, let's, let's do it, let's, it. Make it happen. let's make it happen. Yeah, nice 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 so actually I have something else for you as well, you know. Since I do know your favorite color is green, I ended up getting you a beautiful green dope from Morocco. Amazing, man. Yes, sir. Is that just for you? Wow, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's incredible. And I got you a white one as well to match your outfit and to match yeah. the crib as well. You know what I'm saying? very good to see you, bro. Of course, of course, of course. Amazing, amazing. I should, we should rock these when we go to the beach. Hey, let's do it. Why not? Intense pants, man. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's <laughs> let's do it. Amazing, brother. Amazing. Thank you so much. Of course. This is gorgeous. I didn't know they did it in this color. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Excellent. Thank you Excellent. so much, brother. If there's a will, there's a way. Right? Very generous yes, of you. Thank you. Of course. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. No problem. Incredible. Yes, so I see you have some beautiful art here. Yeah. Do you mind uh, sharing with us a little bit about it, my brother? Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's talk it through. So part of my... Uh, custom-made reality is, is I like custom art as well. Okay. Okay. And for me, it's it's not so much just the art as the artist. So there's, there's two examples here, or three. Uh, or there's, okay, there's many, <laughs> but I'll, I'll talk about three. First of all, there's Jack of the Dust. So you see that the skull's here, he's an Auss Aussie chap. Okay. Uh, he's doing really well now because Joe Rogan started displaying his stuff on, on the desk that Joe Rogan does his podcast. Okay, wonderful. And the idea of having the skulls is the concept of memento mori. It's, just, it's not that dissimilar to um, the idea of Judgment Day. You're constantly reminded of the fact that we are mortal and that you'll die. And with my experience and the way I've, I've seen a lot of the world outside of the West, I know that life is a very fleeting thing. It can end very quickly. And so I find it quite useful to be surrounded by reminders of the fact that there's no guarantee that your life will continue tomorrow. You need to get the most out every day, which ties into my philosophy, which we can talk more about if you like. So the skulls are there to remind us that 
life is a very delicate thing and it, there's no guarantee that it'll continue. And you need to be conscious of getting the most out every day. There's this one here, which is really cool. Can we come close in on this? So this is by an artist called Gabby out of, uh, I think she's out of the Netherlands. And what, what she's done here is she's taken uh, watch pieces, because obviously I like watches, and she's put them into a scorpion. Now, I, I have a whole scorpion story. I don't know how deep we want to go into that. Oh, let's do it, man. Let's oh, do cool. it. Okay, we're going to do the scorpion story. This hasn't been done before on camera. So okay, let's make it I was 20 years old, about mm -hmm. that first trip overseas with the army. I was an infantryman in the Australian army. Mm -hmm. And we were on patrol in East Timor. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically looking to intercept militia, enemy militia coming across the border from Indonesia and, and engage them. And so to do that, you, you have what's called an OP, an observation point. And you, you sit there for a long time on known you know, areas that they'll cross, this is a riverbed, and, and you watch them and, and you either engage or you know, arrest them when they come through. Mm -hmm. And so you've got a platoon area uh, with, with different um, machine gun points and the weapons are staked facing in a different direction okay. and you have to take turns manning them. Okay. So I came up with, with my guy for the next, what's known as picket. Okay. I tapped my guy on the shoulder to move, so I came down to take the, the gun mm -hmm. and there was this big scorpion there. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine went to kill her. I was like, no, 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 Let, I have gloves on. Because you know you have cam and everything, I had gloves. I picked him up, I threw him a good five meters. Mm. I got down behind the gun, and you know, it's, it's like a two hour picket. So mm. you're just sitting there talking shit, watching. Mm. And I see this little scorpion just running at me, mm. its claws up. Oh, wow. I'm like, what? I picked him up, I said, I'm trying to save your life, friend. And I threw, yeah. threw him a good 20 meters, like proper threw him. Okay. Like th these animals, they're, they're crazy. Get back down. Half an hour later, uh -huh. I feel this massive pain in my left arm. The frontal attack didn't work, mm -hmm. so he did a flanker. Wow. <laughs> I looked at him, I picked up a rock and said, I'm going to kill you now. Uh -huh. He looked up at me and said, I don't care, I win. Okay. And, and he, was, he, was, he was waiting for me to kill him, wow. because he made his point. Okay. Wow. I disrespected him, he uh -huh. tried the frontal attack, didn't work, he did the, the flanking attack, and he got me, and he won, and he was prepared to die. Wow. Because he won. So ever since then, I mean, and that was a nasty few days. <laughs> I can only imagine what kind of bite that was. Uh, it, it, well, I mean, it's not fatal, just your, your whole arm, just, yeah, and you feel you know, you don't feel that good. Um, but it wasn't worth an evac or anything. Uh, but from that, I was like, scorpions are about it, man. Mm. <laughs> They're not playing. The tenacity, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So, so I've got scorpion cufflinks, and yeah, I have huge respect for these animals. So as soon as I saw this piece of art, they both combined watch pieces and a scorpion, I had to get it straight away. Wow, that's so, absolutely beautiful. That's the story there. Now, have a look at this piece. This is really special. It's from an artist called Jonas Lerich. This is a custom piece. Uh, that was built, there's over 5,000 Swarovski crystals. Uh, this is custom croc leather. This was built to match the car collection. Okay, wonderful. And the Ferrari has the, you know, the gold, the leather inside, um, and the, the other cars have a similar spec, and I'm, I'm redoing the interiors to, to match basically this, and, and there's custom duffel bags coming from the same artist, so everything's kind of matching in a way. Uh, and it all happens organically over time, so that's good fun. But there's this piece here, man, which is probably the, uh, the most impressive in terms of what viewers would like to see at home. So this is a custom watch safe from Bourbon and Zoic. Uh, I'm a big fan of watches um, because for me they are a symbol of success. Uh, obviously we use we use our phone to check the time, right? Yes. yes <laughs> so, so this is more of a, a status thing, but status you get sick of. Uh, for me it's a symbol. It's a symbol of not being a poor kid anymore. Mm. Uh, I like when I travel that I have a contingency plan on the wrist. They say a Rolex gets you on the last plane out of anywhere. Mm. And in my business, you want to have that ability to, to get on that last plane. And I've got many examples from my career where I've literally gotten on you know, some of the last planes before the airspace shuts down. Okay, and wonderful. so having that contingency plan on the wrist is super useful. Uh, and the idea behind the custom safe, we've got my symbol, the JS symbol. I mean, that's another story we can talk through if you want. Uh, but it's all carbon as well and green. So we have it matching the cars as well, matching the skulls. Or the, the, the same spec is, is throughout. The green jackets. You know, there's I a, there's love a theme it. here. I absolutely love it. Well, it ties into this idea of custom-made reality, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, I think when you get to a point where you've got the cars, you've got status for whatever that's worth, you've got everything material, you, you realize the material gets boring quickly. Absolutely. So for me, personalizing things, whether it's art or cars or a house, uh, that's, that's where the magic is when it comes to possessions. Anyone can buy something making it truly an expression of who you are and, and tailoring it to your, your likes. Mm -hmm. The same way you tailor a jacket. That, that's, that's what I find satisfying. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. beautiful. That's I absolutely know. beautiful and I see I know you like that it, you know, it, it turns by itself as well, man. Yeah, exactly. Now that's then, wonderful. All the gold watches are gone, except I couldn't sell this one because I love it too much. Okay. But I won't wear it because 
that's all right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's good fun, man. It, so what fun. would you say is your favorite art piece that you have, you know, on display? Oh, tricky, man. Um, if you had to pick one. If you had, had to pick, pick one. one. Yes. To be honest, I'd say it would have to be this. Okay. Because this was such a drawn out process. This was like a uh, four month build. Wow. And, and the artist who does this is, is a world leader in his field. Like there's so much detail into this. It's just incredible. And, and the way he was able to match it, you know, with the gold base and the, the green and gold to, to the car collection, that is just next level. I need to get a proper mount for a proper lighting. Like it's incredible. Piece. So how did you choose green as your favorite color? Because I see everything is kind of resembled around the green color. So what is it about the green? Tell us a little about that. I, I'm not sure, man. It's just, Color of Islam, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you're Muslim before yeah, you're Muslim, exactly. huh? That's beautiful. Yeah, it gives, gives, gives uh, credibility to the idea of reverting. Uh, I'm not sure. It's always been the color, brother. It always has been. Um, for me, the one thing I miss in Dubai is nature, and nature is green, so I like to have a lot of green around me. What if that makes sense? What? Let me show you over here as well, man. So this is the uh, an extension of, of the study. Um, I've never done this on camera before. Should we go a bit deeper? The origin it's, story? it's up to you, my brother. Right, to you. I would actually love to hear it. I right, love to hear. it. I'm pretty it. sure many people will love to hear about it as well, my brother. All right, brother. Let me choose a suitable jacket. Uh, let's go with this one here. So when I grew up, I grew up a uh, single parent household and we're on, we're on welfare mm -hmm. and it wasn't a peaceful environment. You know, dad, dad wasn't there. Mum was stressed out. Being a single mum was stressful. You can understand why. And so from the earliest of, of the, like part of my identity growing up was I was the poor kid. I got teased about being dressed in only secondhand clothing. So clothing was always a bit of a, a mental thing for me. Mm. Uh, and what I did is my first job was I'd get on my little crappy bike and I'd ride from the poor area of town mm. uh, where I was in Australia into the rich area. Mm. And I'd collect money for the newspaper delivery. Mm. And what I'd do is I'd sign JS on the receipt, give it to the person, take the money. And I'd look up at their big houses and I'd say to myself, one day I'll be in a big house like that. Wow. And, and now um, that JS concept is on all of my jackets. So if you come in here, it's the same JS signed by that poor kid tens of thousands wow. of times, manifesting a better reality, right? That is amazing. No, thank you. So I've gone from only secondhand clothing to only tailor made clothing, but now that same JS is on the safe, it's on the cars. You know, I haven't put it on a house. <laughs> there must it's be coming a, soon though. There must be a, li a, limit, a limit to someone's narcissism, right? <laughs> but that, that, that's the origin story, and that's why I take uh, dressing well so seriously because. For the longest of time, I was angry at how I looked. I was the, the secondhand clothing smell was part of my upbringing. Whereas now, the fact that it's all custom made is that that gives me energy to work harder, and it gives me energy to try and lift up my brothers so that they can do the same. Because I've been there. I've been that poor guy. I've gone to bed hungry many times. So I know what that's like. Mm -hmm. But then to to be in this reality and understand it takes a lot of energy to get there. I think it's very important to surround yourself with symbols that remind you of where you've started from, and that's what that whole JS symbol is about. That's wonderful. So you went from secondhand clothes to now custom clothes. That's it, brother. And some, some of them are, I mean, you want to talk about nouveau rich. Have a look at this. I have literal uh, money <laughs> on the linings. I've got an incredible tailor. Uh, shout out to Stallion Bespoke. We do a lot of good work together. Uh, and you see in the war room, I take a lot of uh, war room guys to the tailors. Simply because the time and energy invested into getting tailor-made clothing, it, it pays incredible dividends. Okay. You come across with more credibility professionally. You're actually displaying a form of social intelligence if you really know how to dress. So I, th I think every young man who wants to level up in life would do well to get to the tailors and then put a bit of time and effort into dressing like they're, they're putting their best foot, foot forward. All these tech guys, you know, with their t-shirts, we're adults, let's dress like adults. If you're, if you're a serious professional, why don't you dress like it? So that's, that's the whole sartorial thing there, man. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's so beautiful. I'm so happy that you actually took out the opportunity to show that, show that. I haven't done that on camera before, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all good, man, all yes, good. Sir. I appreciate that, my brother. Excellent. Should we keep going with the hands? Yeah, why not? Let's do it, let's do it. You go first, my brother. Thank you, thank you. Sir. Love those prayer mats, man. Thank yes, you yes, much. absolutely. Hopefully, what I'm hoping is every time you pray, you pray for me as well. Indeed, of course. Let's make it real, man. Let's make it real. So, okay, a lot of people, they come into my house and they say, oh, you've got a, a man cave. Hmm. What? My house is my man cave. I have motorbikes in my lounge room. <laughs> the idea that I, I, I have you know, this man cave, a man just has permission to do what he wants in one room. Mm. So the motorbikes are there to show everybody that's not a man cave. Yes. <laughs> it's a man house. It's a man house. It's a man house. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you, man. So of all my vehicles, actually, this is the most terrifying one. Okay. I talk about this. Why do you say that? This thing is just, it's 208 horsepower, okay. but it's 198 kilos. Okay. So it's a monster. And there's... 
I'm yet to even come close to pushing this because you just run out of road. Okay. It's, it's this tunnel of speed mm -hmm. and then you run out of road. Mm -hmm. So you can't even enjoy it properly, it's that quick. This thing is, I will never be able to get to even close to, to, to push the limits on this bike, with the bike's capacity, because my capacity as a rider is just not there. Mm -hmm. Ducati is, it's, those who have driven Ducati, Ducatis, I know, I know you like bikes, I mean, the, the, it's just the next level, right? Absolutely. It's, they're Absolutely. just another, the, the, the way Ducati have mastered the art of making bikes, to me is incredible. But this thing's terrifying. I get nervous every time I drive. I see you took it out one day with your tactical uh, slippers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I should probably dress better, it's true, it's true. Right, let me show you the other one. So, this was my first bike that I bought in Dubai. Uh, so the Diablo, oh, you, you might like the, the racing mat there. Okay, wonderful. So I'll show you some of my cars. Oh, <laughs> what? What? There's no such thing as toxic masculinity. Well, that, that's why I'm having fun with it. So if toxic masculinity means I take care of my family, okay. I work hard every day to, to make, you know, in my career to make the world a safer place. I have quality brothers around me who also have these traditional values and everyone in my circle is living well. Call me, to, call me toxic. That's what this is about. Hey, I'm toxic too. Then. Exactly. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a collective, mate. A collective of toxically masculine brothers. Yes, sir, so come over this side and have a look at it, the open wheel on this side. So this, you see the big fat tire. When it comes to zero to 100, this is about 2.5 seconds. Like okay. It's so talky, it's always it's back breaking. Mm -hmm. I've got the aftermarket exhaust, I, I do exhaust on everything. I really enjoy the, the sound. Mm -hmm. This thing is so quick off the line, it, it's brutal. If you can keep the front wheel down, like it wants to loop you. Oh, it's wow. a monster, mate. Oh, it's, wow. it's, I, you can get up on the handlebars and fully engage and you'll still be picking up. Oh wow. It's such a monster. Wow. So yeah, now that I'm, I'm getting too old for this sort of thing, it's basically lounge room art that gets driven once a week. Okay. But, yeah. <laughs> so when did you first get into bikes? Uh, well, actually, funny story, I got divorced in 2018. Okay. I bought this bike to role model specifically to my son that his dad was about it. Okay. And I mean, look, it's just a bike, but everyone else in my circle, they're all like, oh, I wish I had a bike, but my wife won't let me. Mm. Part of my getting divorced and, and getting my life back and getting my energy back and living the way I wanted to live was, all right, I want to have fun again. Mm -hmm. oh, I've got money, I've been working hard, let's go and get some toys. I mean, Absolutely. I might have got a few, too many toys. <laughs> but I might have there's, there's a bit no of, such thing as too many a bit, toys. A bit over the top. But I bought this because I think it's one thing to tell a kid, especially a son in today's day and age, live by your belief systems. Don't let society put you into some sort of constrained you know, hole, which is what most, most men, they're not living for fulfilled realities. I can you know, they're, they're a slave to their wife, they're a slave to their job, you know, they're a slave to the kids' routine. This for me was, son, if you want to be that crazy guy who goes and buys a loud motorbike, you do it. And so I was role modeling that. Mm. And to be honest, both my son and my daughter, they enjoy this bike more than me. Because okay. this, was, this was dad being fun again. This was dad being the guy who was enjoying life again. Because for the longest of time, again, slave at work, slave to the woman always in your ear whinging. This was me, uh, what, 2018, getting, getting my life back. And Wonderful. since then, I mean, everything's gone incredibly well, Absolutely. alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, uh, all praise the most high. Yeah, indeed. But this, this, this bike, I mean, they're all symbols, right? Like, it's, a bike's a bike. Mm -hmm. But this, this has a story. Uh, so yeah, I love it. I hope I'm making that clear. No, um, absolutely. Actually, I love it. I love it. I, I love the story behind it. And I hear so many men today say the same thing. Like, hey, I want to get a bike, mm -hmm. but my wife. My wife won't let me. My wife, yeah. What you going to do, beat you up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she hasn't got hands. Yeah, she don't got no hands, you know? <laughs> As a brother, Tristan Tase, she ain't got no hands, you know? <laughs> Yeah, so this, this, is a, this is a monster, but to be honest, I don't ride it that much because it puts a lot of strain on the back. Oh, okay. And my back's all kinds of messed up, so yeah. Great Thank bike. Thank you for showing us Be careful. No, good, man. No, good. Let's see. Let's see. Let's you want to see my, my, um, my matchless? Yeah, let's do it. Let's it's, do it. it's a bit different to the traditional matchless. Okay, okay, let's do it. <laughs> all right, bro. Ooh, I see it. I see it, man. Yeah. So it's, I think it's got everything it needs. So, I, I got this for my son who does his boxing, so I can clear this away so he can train. Okay. But also, I, I'm not trying to be big and, and you know a fighter. I'm just trying to be pain free. I, I carry some pretty serious injuries from army days, mm -hmm. so this is where I do my daily rehab. Uh, very boring exercises, but it keeps my body in in one piece. Nice. You know, I remember Tate, you know, hitting this a few times. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. There was a couple of videos of him doing that. You know, I, that was I, awesome. I, I think he broke it a few times. <laughs> Is this the same one or is it yeah, different one? one? It's the same one, huh? Yeah, with the, with the mustard behind. So oh, wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. And yeah. there's a lot of footage of sparring things in this room, so yeah, this is a good room. I try and put in as much time as I can. That's amazing. That's amazing. Do you encourage every man to have a workout room in their house as well? 
I mean, the way Tate does it is quite interesting. He has one of these mm -hmm. and a bench press, and that's it. And it's not even fancy. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, recently they did buy a more fancy gym, but for the longest of time, Tate had one of these machines and a bench and some, and some you know, basic dumbbells, bubbles, that was it. Mm -hmm. So the idea of needing a fancy gym, Tate himself, when he walks in here, he sort of scoffs a bit. He's like, you know, fancy gym, you don't need a fancy gym. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say to any, any guy, he should have a workout area in his house. And, Part of the approach that I've adopted, which Tate does, is just get a certain amount of reps in every day. Wonderful. Just pick a, pick, a, pick a weight, pick a number, and regardless of how you feel, get the reps in. I love that. Yeah, and I, I do that with this stair machine. That's the single most useful piece of, of um, exercise equipment I have. And if you've got a busted up back, it's very hard. I can't put any load on my lower back. Mm. That's a very low, low strain, but decent intensity workout, the stair machine. And if guys live in apartments, just Run up and down the stairs. Yeah. You don't need a gym, you don't need access to a gym. The idea that you need money to be fit, you need time, but it may, any, any man can train. I think it's essential. I think it's a man's duty. I mean, Islam even says it, right? Yes. It says it, it's a man's duty to be strong. So it's, I, I really believe in it. I understand. And also in Islam, it says that this body is a gift given to us by our Creator. So it's only beneficial to us if we take care of that body that was given to us. You know, obviously, He gave it to us in a perfect form. And then if we end up destroying our own bodies, we're going to be questioned for that. Interesting. So the fact that you are taking the time to maintain the body that was given to you, you know, you're going to be rewarded for that. It's actually an act, act of worship. That's interesting. It makes sense. I mean, if the body is a gift, that makes a lot of sense. And I see a lot of people, especially because I'm 40 now, a lot of people who run businesses and have a lot of stuff, they work themselves to the bone and they're not taking care of the body. So I think, to, especially to the, the high output guys out there, you have to prioritize this. I've, had, I've been in positions where my health has fallen over, you're no good to anyone. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be that provider, that protector, if you want to be successful as a man, you must have, I'd say at least, at least 40 minutes a day devoted to keeping your body in check. And also, you know, I believe that just kind of shows how much you love yourself as well. And I think it's important for men to love themselves. The fact that you have the signature, it reminds you of your beginning. The fact that you take care of your body, you take care of your mind, you take care of your soul. It just, I think it's a great, um, you know, it's a great thing to see. You know, it's a great thing to see. I think more men should start caring more about themselves. Because obviously we're naturally givers and sometimes we neglect ourselves. But that just shows like how things, you know, that, that bike was a symbol of you doing what you want mm -hmm. and how you want to take care of yourself. And now subhanAllah, look at, look at that man, it's so beautiful to see. It's a good point and I think throughout history, men have sacrificed themselves. We've gone off to battle and we've mm -hmm. died, you know. That, that, that piece of our historical, you know, mur mural mapping, men can do the same in the current day where they, they, they forget about their brothers, they forget about their fitness, they forget about living the life they want to live. Man, when I got divorced, I unpacked my shed. Mm -hmm. And I had not, for nine years, I hadn't used my hiking kit. I hadn't used my, my snowboarding kit properly. I hadn't used my shooting kit. For nine years of a marriage, I put aside all the stuff I wanted to do just to do the right thing. I was deeply unhappy as a result. So I think men, yes, we're givers, but I think we need to be selfish givers. I think that's an important concept. If you want to give the most to your family, to your brothers, to your causes, to your work, to society, you have to give to yourself first. I think men have forgotten that. Of course. And I think society right. wants men to forget that. Yeah. Because society wants men to be this, this concept of the plow horse. You know those horses with their head down, pulling the plow through the field? Mm -hmm. That sort of depressed animal who gets up, drags himself to work, does the right thing. I think if men don't consciously program their own minds, they will end up in a very unfulfilled daily reality of being that plow horse who exists to serve everyone else and, and neglects to serve themselves. Wonderful. That's a wonderful example, my brother. Mm -hmm. Wonderful example. Thankfully, we don't live like that in this house. <laughs> absolutely. Let's continue, but absolutely. You're a happy horse. Yeah. You're a happy horse. I'm very happy. <laughs> so, this, should we do some cars? Can I talk cars? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, cool, there's more rocking up later. Okay, let's do this one now. Sultan Chi. Sultan. That's a awesome one. So, that bike is amazing. I have to find a way to get that bike to the mountains of Colombia. Okay. Have, have you been to Colombia? I haven't, I haven't. Man, the, the best motorbiking in the world. It's nice sealed roads, mm -hmm. uh, but you've got amazing undulating terrain, like really, really good mountains. Wow. So I'm, I'm going to get that bike in Colombia, or I'm going to 
buy one over there. Okay. <laughs> because that's heaven. That's, for me, that's biking heaven. That's beautiful. Well, I've heard a lot of good things about Colombia, so yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's amazing place, man. It's a real vibe. I also really want to motorbike in Turkey, and I want to explore Albania, uh, Macedonia on bike. Well, why Turkey? Uh, there's, there's really good biking there, apparently. Okay. I'm, looking, I'm, I'm going to buy some land there as well. Wonderful. That'll be one of the summer bases. Romania was going to be the summer base, but it's not going to be anymore. Yeah, so. not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> so let's talk through this car, man. This is so fast, it's, it's terrifying. Um, my mechanic's rocking up shortly. He's modified this so hard, or we've modified it together. It's about 800 horses. 800 horses in a Porsche, that's worth like 1,000 horses in another car. Oh my God. Porsche just know how to put that power down. And so, you see there's a full carbon kit, custom wheels. I've even got my initials on the brake calipers. Ooh. Maybe a bit. Of that. Hey, we gotta get that in there. We gotta get that in there. Look at that. Yeah. That's a, that. That is thanks to um, my my mechanic. He's a creative genius. You'll meet him, but he's coming. Okay, he's, he's amazing, amazing, amazing guy. Amazing guy. And there's the JS over here as well. Um, and if you look at the level of detail here, check this out, brother. This is Dmitry Karbanov. He's a genius. Mm. Look at this gold trim right here. The way he, the level of detail he puts in is just extraordinary. Wow. So yeah, he, he's he's a creative genius. And you see, top car. Their, their symbol is a shark. Mm. Uh, the animal that I resonate most with is, is the shark, that, that apex predator, comfortable in the dark, you know, that sort of thing. That, wonderful. Yeah, so you see a lot of sharks around as well. Okay, wonderful. Uh, but at, at the back, this, the, the fun thing about this thing. So when Top Car do a carbon kit, it usually says Stinger. Okay. Right? Okay. And that, but they gave me the words Porsche. I said, can I, can I change that out? Said, <laughs> if it has the same letters, because uh -huh. you see the base is restricted because of the, the, the amount of letters of Porsche. Okay. And so I'm like, hang on, S-H-O-O, -O. oh, it works. Ah, <laughs> let's go, let's go. Man. So yeah, it doesn't say Porsche or Stinger, it says, it says Shooter now, so it's a bit of fun. We might have to replace it with Batman in the Batman. future. Yeah. <laughs> Batman doesn't have the right amount of letters, bro. We, we need seven letters for it to yes, work. Yes. But yeah, this car's an animal, it's, it's, it's so fast, it's just, it's a lot of fun. I would say to those looking to buy Porsche though, don't, don't go with a Turbo S, mm -hmm. it's just an animal with speed, but it's not, it doesn't handle as well. Okay. Go with one of the GT cars. Mm -hmm. So the GT3 or the GT Touring, in retrospect, would be a better car because you can track it. Like a kid at Christmas, man. <laughs> that's, that's the beautiful thing about personalizing cars. It's like you get a new car every other week. Because you know, there's always something changing on my car, so I get that feeling of, oh, this is fun, yeah. all the time, yes, all sir. the time. Yes, sir. And these wheels, they're custom-made wheels by Power Wheels. Okay. They're ridiculous. Wait till you see it, man. Okay. There's awesome. custom made and then there's this. So I'm oh super my excited. God. Look at her. She's looking beautiful. And a lot of people, they say, oh, it's only a Corvette. I love this car. Yeah. I enjoy it so much. I, I, don't, I don't think there should, anyone should criticize a Corvette. Value for money and just pure enjoyment. Incredible vehicle. Incredible car. Wow. The, the American Ferrari, right? Yeah. Ferrari. I mean, uh, Corvette took the, um, they took the 488. I believe it was a 488, and they basically said, right, we want to recreate it. And so they made an American Ferrari, and I think they succeeded. This car is so over-engineered. It's so much fun to drive. For. They did an incredible job. Salam, brother. How are you? Good to see you. Salam, how are you? And that's it's something so beautiful, living in a Muslim country, that everyone you see is basically your brother. Yeah, it's real. It's it doesn't real. matter if they're a stranger, yeah. you know, just you saying salam to them, giving them that greeting of peace. Mm. It takes it to another level, man. No, it's cool. It's, I think if you want to talk about a way to make society respectful, if everyone's following Islam, then, man, we're good. It's, yeah. it's sorted, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I look at Islam as a lot more than a religion. It's a, a system with which to, as an, on an individual level, get the most out of human experience, but also on a, on a soci societal level, to create the most cohesive society. I mean, the only problem is humans are involved, right? Of course, of course. <laughs> if, it was, if it was a, if everyone was a pure-hearted, strict Muslim, mm -hmm. I genuinely believe societies would be perfect. I agree with you. But of course, Shaitan's doing his thing, right? Yeah, that, that's absolutely. the issue. And that's the challenge of life as well. Mm. The challenge of life as well. Yeah. 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 It's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be a test. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, along with the test, comes a massive reward as well. I like it. That, that's the game. And I like, I like that Islam conceptualizes these things. Every day you can make the right choices, get rewards. You can make the wrong choices, get... Take. Those living in the West, they don't even have that frame on reality. They can do whatever they want. Take whatever drugs you want, have sex with whoever you want, play video games, however you like. There's no idea of being held accountable to a higher force. And that's why you see Western societies failing. Absolutely. It's that simple. It really Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Oh, I got to see these wheels, man. Woo! I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, look at that.
<laughs> I love it. So we, here we have the, uh, and this is all thanks to Deutsche Technica. Okay. DT Service Center, amazing. The guy who runs it is an absolute artist. We have the JS on the hubcaps and on the brake calipers. Fully custom made wheels. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'll drive it out. We can talk through it a bit more. Wonderful. So excited. <laughs> I love the excitement, bro. Look at yeah. let's, get, let's get a glimpse of the inside, man. Look at that. Look at that. The only issue with us, man, is finding cars we can fit in, right? Yeah, I know. Like, you won't fit in a Lamborghini, brother. <laughs> you, you, you say goodbye to the Lamborghini range. Oh, man. See, now I need to lower it. That's the problem. Like it's <laughs> that is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Fully custom made. And they color matched from a distance. Like they, the way they've managed to match this to this and this to this. It's all, again, thanks to my boy uh, Ahmed at DT Service Center. Best garage in Dubai by far. That's amazing. Just, yeah. And also, have a look at the details on this car. This is, a, this is thanks to Dimitri Karbanov, so Karbanov Designs, where he came in. And we talked about this. I said I wanted to use the lines. And you see the way that's sort of flashing back and forth. But then the little touches, this is where Carbonov excels. Look at this little touch here. Mm -hmm. This little, the, the little bit of gold there. Mm -hmm. I mean, the man's just a creative genius. Absolutely. I love it. We've got the Absolutely. JS here, keeping it classy. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, man. I, I, enjoy, I really enjoy the personalization. It's like, Congratulations, brother. Oh, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. You're creating art in, in all of your surroundings, right? Like actual art. Um, the clothing that you wear is, is pretty much an art form that cars. I think that's how it should be. You know, alhamdulillah, I'm able to afford this, but I, I think you should be able to, if you're working hard, create that custom-made reality. And I think every every young man or woman as well who's really hustling, they should seek to create that custom-made reality because it's very fulfilling. Not just with stuff though, with brothers, or with meaningful work, with the opportunity to give back to society. Your daily reality should be custom-made. That's that's one of my key sort of messages that I'm trying to get I out love there. That. I love that. I love Thank that. you. Bro. Guys, we are in the Corvette. Tell us a little bit about the car, my brother. I mean, look, people say it's just a Corvette. Good, it's just a, it's just a Corvette. Like, I love it. <laughs> the Americans, somehow, they know how to make something that feels good. It's gratifying. Like, I'll, I'll show you. It's not super fast, but it feels good. Man. Woo! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Like, it just feels good, man. Yeah. And it's, it looks beautiful. And yet, the fact that it, it costs less than a nice watch, for me, I like it, man. Like, if, if it gets written off, okay, get another one. You know, like, <laughs> it, there is some relief in 
the car not costing four hundred thousand dollars that you're smashing around. You know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. And look at the setup too, man. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a dude. cockpit, basically, man. Yeah, it's look at that, dude. Honestly, for people who want a, a good, fun car that looks amazing and gives you a real enjoyment in driving, seriously consider the Corvette. And this isn't even the Z06. This is a standard Corvette. Amazing car. I absolutely love it. And Strongly we're big guys. I'm 6'7", yeah. he's 6'6". Six, six. Six. Yeah. Like, and, and we fit in this comfortably, man. Yeah. You won't fit, at our size, you won't fit in a Lamborghini. The Huracan, the Aventador, forget about it. Mm. And also, a lot of Ferraris you'll struggle with. This one you will fit in. It's built for big Americans, right? Wow, wow. Like, they're fantastic car, man. I love it. Wow. I enjoy it so much. And this gets more photos than the Ferrari. Mm. People don't even know what this is. I mean, I've dressed it up a bit, right? It's not a normal looking Corvette. Yeah. But if you're the sort of guy who wants to create a bit of noise as well, you can do that with this car. There's a lot to love about this car and there's very little downsides. It's as simple as that. Woo! <laughs> Drive.